Now today we're going to look at something a little bit weird, so the modern web has some serious problems, not just with say advertising and security issues, but with some more subtle things in the form of predatory web design. What I mean by this is things like brightly colored logos, which entice the user to go and click on them, or say on YouTube how you have auto-playing videos where you may be intending to go and watch one video and then it turns out maybe an hour or two has passed and you just keep watching stuff because YouTube just keeps providing you with more content. Now there are some obvious ways you can avoid some of this by doing things like accessing the web through means besides just a regular web browser like Firefox and Chromium. So maybe by using a text-based web browser that doesn't actually render any images or render any CSS by doing things like disabling JavaScript to make sure the autoplaying ads can't actually happen. But because we have a video player built into HTML5 now, the video itself can still play, or even going so far as accessing web content outside of a web browser by using things like RSS feeds and an RSS reader, or some websites actually have API access where you can actually access the content of the website by making calls from a programming language. But the first two have obvious problems where the modern web basically relies on JavaScript existing and there's some websites out there where if you disable JavaScript, you literally get nothing but a blank page. But there's another approach we can take and that is by modifying the websites we visit to remove the offending content to make the web a far less attention grabbing experience so that when you want to use the web, you are making a conscious decision to do so rather than being enticed by the developers of the website. And and that's what Minimal, the plugin we're looking at today, does. Now, full disclosure, I do know the main developer of the plugin. His name is Tim Kreef. I did a podcast with him. It was a really fun episode. I didn't actually know about this plugin before I did the episode, and I felt like it was a pretty cool project. He never asked me to look at the plugin. I just wanted to go and have a look at it for myself. So because of what's being changed, there is a limited number of websites that are supported right now, but currently YouTube seems to have the longest list of changes. This right here is the YouTube homepage with the plugin enabled. So the first thing you'll notice is that all of the buttons in here that would have had some color have been completely desaturated. Even things like the YouTube logo has been made much darker. And also any of the thumbnails on this page have been darkened until you actually go and hover your cursor over them. One thing that does seem kind of out of place is this giant YouTube premium ad, which hasn't been desaturated, hasn't been removed, is just looking as it always does. I feel like the reason why that hasn't been affected is because YouTube always has their code monkeys always changing anything, and that's why plugins like this tend to break fairly often. So if we go and disable the plugin for just a moment, we'll get to see what the website looks like in comparison. So this is how the YouTube website normally looks. As you can see, there is so much more color going on, and it's so much more attention grabbing. But the biggest changes are probably on the YouTube watch page. So let's go to this video right here. I'm going to skip right to the end because I don't actually want to get copyright striked. As we can see, there is no auto playing next video. When you get to the end of the video, it just stops. Nothing else happens. And off to the right hand side here, we don't have any suggested videos. Basically, all we get is the video, we get the description, and we get the comments under the video. If you want to go and watch something else after this, you have to go and make the conscious decision to find new content. Comparing that to the original version, which looks a little something like this. So, we have all of these video suggestions here, we have these video suggestions off to the side here. If we scroll down the page, we have more video suggestions as we actually scroll, and there's just an infinite list of video suggestions. And right now I've actually got autoplay disabled. If we go and click on that and go back just a bit, it will start autoplaying the next video. Even if we don't click anything, we don't have to touch a single button and the next video will start playing. So even if you're not intending to watch another video, just because the second video starts, you might say, it's just another 30 seconds, it's just another minute, I might as well just watch it. And I know myself definitely find myself falling into that trap and realizing that, a bunch of time has passed. So there are other websites that have been changed, but all of the website changes follow the same sort of idea. So instead, let's go look at the core values of the plugin. This right here is the minimal manifesto. I'm not gonna make you stare at a white page the entire time. So instead, you can go and stare at my face. So this is broken down into three categories. We have the use category, content, and platform. Interactive elements should remain informative and unbiased. Manipulative interactive elements prevent the user from making their own choices. So you'll notice that a lot of websites out there, 
even though they don't really need to, sort of gamify using the website, enticing the user to keep using it even if they don't really need to. A page must only have one key purpose. Other functions must be accessed by an action of the user, not forced onto them. This is why things like, say, auto-playing videos were removed, because this is an action the website does for you and just encourages you to keep consuming content even if you have better things you should be doing. Shortcuts must link to related content or actions that are hard to access. There is no need for shortcuts that invite you to use services already easily accessible and slash or not obviously linked to the main content. So things like suggested videos while still being related to the video are still very easily accessible through other means on the website. So these aren't hard and fast rules. These are just general guidelines for the development of the plugin. When it comes to the content of the page, the main content of the page should stay the only focus. The user should see the main content first and foremost when landing on the page. So when you say watch a YouTube video, the first thing you see is the video itself. You shouldn't be bombarded with suggested videos and everything else the website has to offer. You came to the video page for the video, so you should see the video. The same thing would apply to all of those flash game websites that bombard you with pop-up ads when you're just trying to play a game. There should be no suggestions that have no obvious link to the main content. If a message is not strongly linked to the main content, it is an advertisement either for suggested content or for the platform or both, and should be signaled as such. Basically, if there's going to be advertisements because they're related to the actual page itself, make it very clear that it's an ad rather than trying to hide it as part of the thing the user wants to find. Additional content must be relevant. Displaying additional unasked information can be used to change the behavior of the user. Like say on Amazon you're trying to buy a new microphone and under the microphone it's like hey here are some suggested items that people buy alongside of this microphone even though you may not necessarily need them having those items there can encourage you to make an extra purchase you wouldn't have otherwise made and lastly we have the platform so logos and branding visuals should remain purely informative colors and graphics must not be used to create some sort of pavlovian conditioning I actually had to look up what that meant. Basically, it's the idea of how you train an animal with treats. So as you associate an action with food, as you then take away the food, because the animal has been trained to associate that action with receiving food, even though there's no food there, they'll continue to do the action. In this case can mean you associate the colorful YouTube logo with watching enjoyable videos. And lastly, any platform curation process should be made in the user's interest. A platform curation process should only help the user find interesting content. This process, if not properly disclosed, signals that a conflict of interest might be at play. So this is how with, say, political content, YouTube will very frequently suggest you content that slightly annoys you just to make you keep watching more and more of it. While you're ultimately responsible for the choices that you make, the advertising industry is built upon influencing these choices in ways that you wouldn't otherwise intend. Especially in ways that aren't entirely obvious because people are really good at justifying to themselves why they made a decision even if they weren't the ones who actively made that decision and this has been demonstrated time and time again in social influence experiments. There is a full list of websites and changes to those websites over on the minimal website. So we have YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Google, Stack Overflow, Amazon, Yahoo of all things, I don't know why Yahoo, Netflix, and Reddit. I'm not gonna go through all of these changes in here, but if you wanna go see exactly what has been changed to all of these websites, I would recommend coming here first. Now, due to the way that this is being developed, it does have some serious limitations. So when you go and do something like say, run a text-based browser or disable JavaScript, you can be absolutely certain that some things are just going to stop working. So if you run a text-based browser, you can guarantee there won't be any images and there won't be any CSS. If you disable JavaScript, you can guarantee there won't be any JavaScript. But when you run something like minimal, all that needs to happen is the developers of the website needs to change a couple of CSS classes and everything breaks. But luckily the project is licensed under the GPL and if you want to go and make any changes to it, it is available over on GitLab. So if you want to go and maybe fork it or add a new supported website to the main repo, come over here and 
feel free to go and do so. I'm sure they would absolutely appreciate the support. Now, currently the plugin is available on Firefox, but if you are using Chromium, there is a Chromium version. It's just the Chromium version is in beta, so it may be missing some of the newer features. I'm not actually sure what is and isn't supported between the two versions because there isn't actually a comparison list. Obviously, this project still needs a lot of work, and over time, it's going to require a lot of upkeep to make sure it keeps working, but I think this is a really interesting project, and I love that there are people out there doing things like this. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David Monza, Will, Brennan, Chikabento, Jamie Joseph, Mitchell Pitty, Stephen Tony Zushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, then my link's down below to my Patreon, Subscribe, Star, Libra, Pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere, and then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute. If you want to watch it on a platform that is in YouTube, I wasn't showing the final screen and I'm out.